Hello, my name is Jyoti Patel and I'm a member of the ESC Scientists of Tomorrow. And today I'm going to be interviewing Professor Oliver Sloanhein, who's won the um, ESC Outstanding Achievement Award winner for 2017. So firstly, I'd like to congratulate you on this prestigious award. Um, and what we'd like to discuss today as part of the young scientists in training um, is some of your career options uh, to date. So firstly, um, how did you get to where you are today? What, would you, what is the most exciting discovery you've made and how did you come about? So I think very early during my medical training, I became attracted to basic science and I, I was given the chance to perform very good experiments in a cardiovascular research laboratory. From then on, I realized I really liked science and I moved on to do a a, a real PhD training at the Karolinska Institute in Stockholm. It took me four years. It was very rewarding. We had a blood paper, chase the eye paper, nature of immunology. And from there on, I think I did the most important decision. I moved back to Germany uh, where I got in touch with my mentor during my medical studies. And he advised me to go to the laboratory of Professor Weber, who was a very prosperous um, young scientist. And he gave me the chance to set up a laboratory in his lab, in, in his institute. And I think that was the most important decision I made um, to become a scientist as I am today. The most important uh, finding I made was probably when we realized that neutrophils attract monocytes. And this setting we initially established in an acute inflammatory setting in the microcirculation. We later extended this to macrocirculation, to atherosclerosis, but also to neointima. And we've extended this concept to other fields like to the cooperativity of neutrophils and platelets during monocyte recruitment. So very early we made an observation and we kept on growing and expanding this observation. That was very successful. Very interesting. So um, what would you say has been the most challenging aspect of your career to date? I think there are several aspects that are very challenging when you're a basic scientist. I mean, the first of all is you have to live with setbacks and with, with defeats. I mean, there may be a, a paper that has been in revision for years and then all of a sudden it's being turned down. So you have to live, to, to learn to live with that, to cope with that. You have to develop a strategy. The same with grants. Very often they're turned down for no good reason, at least none that you would know. Um, so you have to learn how to cope with that and how to actually become better with such setbacks. Um, Another aspect is, of course, that basic scientist funding and, and the positions we are in are often short-lived. So from my own position, I can say that I've been on own funding since 2006. In the last 11 years, I paid my own salary. I had very short contracts. And that is just something you really have to learn to live with, that there's very limited security in basic science. And that is something um, you have to be quite uh, self-confident to be able to live with that. So you're an MD, PhD. Um, how have you found balancing your clinical commitments with running the research group as well? So that's actually quite easy because I've stopped seeing patients about 10 years ago. Right. So I've, I'm, I'm a medical doctor by training, but I've dropped out of the medical business just because I think it's very difficult to be a good scientist and a good medical doctor. I think it's very difficult. It's good to have a medical background in basic science so you can ask the right questions. But being very good in both, I think, is, is very challenging. Yeah. So talking about other challenging aspects of clinical and preclinical research, over the last decade or so, it's been quite challenging to translate um, novel therapeutic strategies from preclinical studies to the clinic. Um, what do you think are the greatest obstacles which we face in translating research? It's a, it's a good question. So, I mean, one big problem is, of course, that uh, the models we, we employ in, in basic science or in preclinical studies are often far away from what we actually see in patients. Let's just use the example of the APOE-deficient atherosclerotic mouse, which develops atherosclerosis on a high-fat diet regimen in just four weeks, which is in no way realistic in a, in a human kind of setting. So the model we're looking at and maybe the model we use to identify targets is not appropriate to the, to the patient setting. Um, another obstacle is, of course, that um, the, the, the target that has been identified in a clinical population may be rather coincidental but not causal. So let's, for example, say that high amounts of neutrophils in the circulation 
indicate higher risk for cardiovascular events. But is it causal or is it consequence um, or is it just coincidence? We don't know and nobody knows. So then it's very difficult to identify and it's very important to identify and validate the targets in the clinical setting before maybe trying to target them in a preclinical setting. So this is, these are, I think, two major obstacles, the target validation and, of course, the lack of, of appropriate models. Um, and finally, um, we all know that it's so competitive in the academic community. So what would be your advice to a young cardiovascular scientist in training? What kind of advice would you give to them um, in terms of finding their research scientific identity? I think it's very important to quite early in your academic life to define a niche, both with regard to the content, but also with regard to the methods you employ. Come up with a method that no one else can do. So many people will approach you and ask for advice and maybe service on this method. And content-wise, if you have a question, and if you have a question or a research question that no one else out there has, you'll be unbeatable in this field. So this is very important. Define your niche very early. So I think that's um, about it. I'd like to again congratulate you for your award. Um, um, thank you.